Well, the NHL has released its list of its greatest all-time teams, and the 84-85 Oilers are right at the top. So who better to talk about that than a winner of six Stanley Cups? His ring from the 84-85 season sits in the glass case right behind us, Kevin Lowe. Kevin, thanks for uh, taking the time to talk with us. No, it's just it's a, it's a real pleasure to be here and talk about this. Well, the 84-85 team, you guys come in with a target on your backs, having won the year before. Did that change anything for you going into that season? Did it make it any different to play as a champion? Because you hadn't done it before. No, I, I think it just, uh, the only difference was we were champion and we sort of, I don't want to say we had the swagger of the, the, the champion, but we had the confidence of a champion. We knew, unlike the season before, we were swept by the Islanders in the finals. We knew that, you know, that we could win a championship. Uh, we always felt as a group, uh, because we were talented enough, if we played as a team and, and uh, you know, complied to the game plan, that uh, it'd be very difficult for anyone to beat us. But we, we never took that for granted. So I'd say the 84-85 the season was, uh, let's go do it again, because it was so much fun the year before. So four Oilers teams from the 80s make the list of the top 10 teams. You were on all those teams. You're also a student of the game. In your mind, why was this chosen as the number one team of all time? You know, good question. Uh, funny, Wayne and I had talked a number of times about this and felt that the 86-87 uh, team, we felt, was our best team. Uh, but if you look at the stats from the 84-85 team, you know, there was individual records. Uh, you know, Wayne won a couple. Paul Coffey won his first Norris. Uh, you know, he scored a gazillion points. Uh, uh, the other unique thing about that year is that uh, eight players on that team played the entire season that played never missed a Which regular season game do. so and then our stats were you know we we, we finished first uh, uh, certainly first in our conference um, you know we had a big spread between our goals for and against so there was a lot of great individual records and then probably last but not least you know we went 15 and 3 in the playoffs so I'm sure that had something to do with the fan voting well, let's talk about those playoffs. You sweep the first two rounds, then you run into maybe a little bit of an issue with Chicago, and then, of course, uh, President's Trophy winning Flyers. So talk about that playoffs and what sticks out in your mind about those maybe final two series. Yeah, well, the thing that sticks out the most is that the Jets beat the Flames in the first round. So, <laughs> And even though the Jets finished ahead of the Flames, and the Jets had a good, they had a good young team. They were, they were you know, people say this often, that their only misfortune was that they were in the same division as the... Flames and the Oilers all those years, they might have had gone deeper in the playoffs. But for me personally, and I know a lot of our guys, it was always good to see the Flames out of the equation. Uh, and not that it made things easier, but it, uh, uh, easy, but it made things easier. And, um, you know, Chicago Stadium was a tough building to play in. You know, I think uh, credit the Hawks for taking us uh, in a couple of those games. But we were, you know, functioning in all cylinders by the time we played the Flyers. They were, they were a little inexper inexperienced, not unlike us in 83, and, uh, you know, we went through them pretty easily to get our second cup. What was it like for you guys to come together to see all those offensive performances, personal records, and then win it in back-to-back -back years? Because that's something that's hard to do. You do have that target on your back. To win it back-to-back -back years and then to continue on and do what you did, I mean, wh what was it like in 84-85? Yeah, well, I think the team, um, you know, we were a young team, so there was no reason why we shouldn't win multiple cups. It's, you know, when you have that much talent and that much experience and health, as I indicated, there was, you know, no injuries, no major injuries, that, uh, you know, if you don't win, there's something wrong. Uh, but I, I, I think that, uh, the, you know, the, the team overall uh, felt that, um, and, 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 by that, you know, in, in uh, primarily Wayne and Mark and, and these guys were starting to recognize Paul Coffey that they're having individual records. But I think collectively we all realized that we got the most attention when we won championships. And so there was an opportunity here in front of us to, to, to you know, you don't think of being a dynasty when you're trying to win your second cup. But, you know, subliminally it's there. Like, yeah. you know, this can be a special team. And and let's not miss out on this opportunity. All right, Kevin, one last one for you here. Sometimes when you have players like Wayne Gretzky, Kari, and Coffey on your team, it's hard to look past the superstars. But for you, in your mind, was there any unsung hero or a contributor on the team that deserves a shout out? Yeah, he was certainly unsung at the time, but eventually he'd become a household name, was Essa Ticken, and uh, the Oilers had brought him in. They just signed him after a season in Europe, and he was brought in really, I, I, I believe, just to observe and, and 
and sort of prepare for the for the next season to perhaps make the team. But uh, surprisingly, Glenn uh, Glenn and the coaching staff decided to, to inject him into the finals, which uh, I had never seen before, and the players were all sort of raising an eyebrow. But of course, he went out and was very ticking and like, and uh, and it certainly was a precursor to what to expect for the years to come. So uh, Essa was a bit of an unsung hero, uh, but it became a household name afterwards. Hey, thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, congratulations on the recognition, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks. It's a special, special honor, and we're really proud.